All right, we're looking at examples of Markov chains to illustrate these properties here. And now we're ready for our second example, which will be on four states so that we can draw, draw a little picture here, four states, just to visualize. And this, this will give us a little more leg room to exhibit some other sort of interesting behaviors. So let's just, I'm, rather than go through the details like I did in that first example of why the properties are true, for these, I'm just gonna state the properties and leave it to you to verify them if you're interested. So first we have a transition matrix of the following form. So when you're at state one, you always have to go to two. So here you always have to go to two, you know, with probability one. When you're at two, you can go left or right with probability one half each way, and same thing for three. And then when you're at four, you have to go back to three. So that's what this says. And this is called a symmetric random walk with reflecting boundaries. So they're called reflect, well, it's called symmetric because when you're in the middle here, you have equal probability of going either direction, so it's symmetric. And when you're at the edge, when you're at the boundary, then you get bounced off. Like if you're at one here, then you have to go to two, so you're so you sort of reflect off, and you, you sort of you sort of bounce off and you go back. And the same thing for four; you always have to go to three. And let's think about those properties here. So we had irreducibility is it irreducible in fact it is it's it's pretty easy to check irreducibility but it is not aperiodic so it's not a periodic or you might say it is periodic not a periodic and roughly the reason why is because say you say you start out at state one then at odd times, you're always going to be in state two or four. And at even times, you're always going to be in state one or three. And that results in, in uh, failure of the aperiodicity property. And let's see. Let's think about the stationary distribution. So I worked all this out ahead of time. And this one, it turns out, has the following stationary distribution. One sixth, two sixth. So this is just a simple algebra exercise. It's, you know, not like abstract algebra or anything, just middle school algebra. So you just write down those the equation that you, you have to solve, write down you get some set of equations and you you just solve them and this is what you get so this is the stationary distribution so you're sort of spending more time in the middle here and less time at the at the boundaries okay that was our first little i'm going to give three examples of transition matrices on four states like this variations so the second variation will allow you to stay at one with probability one half still going to be symmetric and then when you're in state four you have to stay in state four so here so when you're in state one, you can either stay with probability one half or go to two with one half. You're symmetric again, just like before on two and three. And then in state four, you have to stay in state four. So this is called a symmetric random walk with partially reflecting boundary at one, at one, and an absorbing state at state four. So four, you, you sort of, if you end up at four, then you get stuck there. You sort of get absorbed into that, into that state and you, you can't leave again. 
this, it turns out, is not irreducible. And the reason is because if you're at 4, then you can't get to any of the other states with positive probability. So it's not irreducible. On the other hand, it is aperiodic still. It's pretty easy to check. 4, you know, you'll, you, you stay at state 4, so those are two consecutive times. And for the others, if you go to 1 and then either, you know, just go back, so like if we're here, we go boom, boom, you know, one, two, three, four steps, or one, two, three, four, five steps. Both of those paths have positive probability, and those are two consecutive times. So, um, and you can do the similar sort of thing for e these others. And so therefore it's aperiodic. And it also has a stationary distribution. which is zero, 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 1. Again, you know, you just write down the, the conditions and you can solve for that stationary distribution. And one more example on these four states. Let's do one more. So we saw an example here, irreducible, not aperiodic. And then this one was not irreducible, but it was periodic. And now we'll see something a little bit different. So in this one, you can go back and forth between one and two here. But you can't get to 3 and 4 from 1 or 2. You can't get to 3 or 4 from 1 or 2. And when you're in 3 or 4, then you can go back and forth between 3 and 4. But you can't get back, you can't go to 1 or 2. So this one, it turns out, is not irreducible for exactly that reason, because you can't get from 3 to 2, for example, with positive probability. It is still aperiodic, and that's clear because for many state, you can just stay at that state at the next time. The diagonal here is, 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 is positive, and so that's a very simple way to see that it's aperiodic. And the interesting thing here is that there are two stationary distributions. So a stationary distribution is not necessarily unique. So we have the following two stationary distributions. Both of these satisfy that inequality. Not, I mean, that equality, not an inequality. Both of them satisfy this. So the idea here is, you know, you got these four and there's sort of like a wall in between. So you can sort of, you know, break it up into two separate Markov chains in some sense. Okay, so those were three just sort of um, simple finite examples to illustrate these. And now we'll take a look at a, a more interesting example. This will be our example three. And it'll be more interesting because we're going to take an infinite set of states. So our set of states now is going to be all the non-negative integers. And we will consider a asymmetric random walk on this set with a partially reflecting boundary. So we'll take some numbers p and q that are positive such that they sum to 1. I could have put 1 minus p or whatever, but it's easier to write this way. And we will assume that P is strictly positive than Q. So like it could be two thirds, one third, something like that. And let's write down the following transition matrix. Let's label the rows and the columns. It's going to be 
an infinite matrix. So from zero, let's say you can go back, you can stay at zero with probability p, and you can go to one with probability p. And the rows sum to one, so the, all the rest has to be zeros. From one, ah, it changed color. Okay, from one, you can go to zero with probability p, you can, uh, or you can go to two with probability q, and all the rest are zeros. And it's going to be zero p zero q zero 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 p zero q zero 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 and so on. So this pattern just we just continue this pattern. So we have this sort of infinite set of states here and when at any given state you can either decrease with probability p or increase with probability q except when you're at the zero state you either stay where you are with probability p or you increase with probability q so intuitively since p is greater than q you you might sort of imagine that things are sort of trending in the sort of downward direction, you know, you're, you're 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 more likely to be moving left than right. And I will just state the properties of, of this guy. So this one, it turns out, it is irreducible, and that's easy to check. You know, I think it's pretty clear. You can just you can sort of. Uh, probably intuitively just see why that is. You can get from any state to another state. There's some path getting there with positive probability. It's aperiodic. And um, so we can use the trick. So one thing we can do is use the trick that since it's irreducible, we only need to check aperiodicity at one of the states. And so we can check it at zero. And zero is satisfies the aperiodicity property because the probability of staying at zero is p so and and p is positive so aperiodicity is satisfied at all the states and so it is an aperiodic chain you could also check that by starting at any state and then like going you know to zero and then right back or going to zero and staying there one step and then going back and that would give you two consecutive times with positive probability uh, where you, you know, started at that state and ended at that state. So it's aperiodic, and in fact, it also has a stationary distribution, and the stationary distribution is the following. Pi k equals q over p to the k times p minus q over p. And this, so this is for all k, 0, 1, 2, and so on. Again, you know, you just write down the set of equations that you have to solve here. And this takes, a, actually, this takes a, a bit of work to, to prove. Um, to, to, it's just a calculation, but, you know, you have to use, like, infinite series and set up a recursion and, and, and solve for, for the infinite series and so on. But it's, it's, not, um, it's not extraordinarily difficult. And so, in fact, this is an interesting example because it has an infinite s set of states and it has a stationary distribution. So that's our first, first part of this example. And the second part, so, so far everything we've looked at has a stationary distribution. But if we take everything the same, same transition matrix, same set of states, P and Q, all this, except instead of P being greater than Q, we say P is less or equal to Q. For example, you know, P equals Q equals one half. Then it's still irreducible and aperiodic. That's not hard to check. But it has no stationary distribution. No stationary distribution. So it's possible for it to have no stationary distribution. And the reason is that the mass is sort of escaping off to infinity here. 